Hey guys, what's going on? Sue Crafted here, and welcome back to another tutorial on the Sky Factory 3 Minecraft Mod Pack. Now, in this episode, uh, it's a little bit bigger and a lot more uh, involved than uh, a lot of other tutorials I've done. And this, because this is a tutorial to make draconium ingots, or draconium in general. Um, so, this is the very first machine that I made for this. Let's just get rid of these so they don't distract me. Oh, there we go. So this is the first version of the Draconium Generator, uh, you know, version 1. Um, it's quite simple to be honest. Um, like many generators I have, it involves a uh, law of power using um, the Crucible and the Magmatic Generators. You might be wondering why I don't use law of generators. It's just that these are so much easier and cheaper to make, um, whereas with the law of generator I mean, they're still not super expensive, the law of generators, but they're just a lot more involved. Um, although they are more efficient. So they're satisfied. You get more energy for your lava from them. But for what we're using, we get, we get more than enough energy anyway from this. So energy really isn't an issue. If you were using this, uh, as a source for other machines, as well as a draconium, uh, generator, then you can use lava generators instead of these if you want. It's, it's configured exactly the same, just different blocks. But as you can see here, we've got more energy coming from these generators too. So yeah, this is my version one. So, and then I built all this. It worked. It worked okay. And then I thought, you know what? I can make this better. So I came over here, and I made a much better version, more compact, easier to use, easier to make, and also more efficient. You get more draconium um, than this one at the same speed. So I was quite happy with this. So. I think what I would do, like a lot of the other tutorials I do, excuse me, uh, I would go through the first version, go through the second, then give you a tutorial for exactly how I made this one. Um, though, like, there's once to give you the information of, of how this thing works, you don't have to make my exact version, you can make your own version that suits your island or your style or whatever you want to do. So basically, I got started with my energy source, and to do that, I made, now it has to be, an emerald generator, uh, a diamond generator at least I found. I'm just using an emerald one here just for the sake of it. But I found that you have to, for, uh, for that one, it's a bare minimum of a diamond generator. But by the time you're making draconium, diamonds should not, shouldn't be a problem anyway, so that's fine. So the first version, I had, uh, six lava crucibles just for this lava here, for these generators, which powers these auto hammers to this auto sieve, which is sieving the dust. And then this goes into this chest, and from the chest it gets filtered out and sent to all the different areas. So if the gunpowder that comes from the dust goes into these explosive generators, which is producing more power, um, basically just to use the gunpowder for something. If you don't, if you want to keep the gunpowder and use it for whatever else your other gunpowder needs, you know you don't have to put it into the generators. You can just store it in the chest or a drawer. There's all, this thing also makes redstone from the dust. And I thought, well, I mean, I don't really need that. By the time you're making this, you probably already have quite a lot of redstone. So I thought, what's a good use for redstone? Maybe netherrack. So I've got another set of crucibles here, which is making lava. And the lava goes from these guys into a stone barrel. And then the redstone that comes out of these chests, out of this sieve, comes into here. And it makes netherrack, and that comes into these drawers. Now, the main thing we were interested in from this is the uh, glowstone. Because the glow, st if you put glowstone into a stone barrel filled with lava, you get endstone. And so I've got another set of cru uh, crucibles here making lava to go under this barrel. And then you can see there that the, uh, the glowstone turns it into endstone. And then with the endstone come here into this drawer, just, just in case it gets backed up. And the endstone gets hammered into crushed endstone. Um, which makes these things. It makes ender pearl powder. It makes sugar pearls, and it makes uh, well, actually, it makes draconium dust. If can I get some? It actually makes this stuff, and so it actually goes from this uh, smelter into here into this furnace, and then from the furnace it gets put into the chest. And so yeah, that's how that works. So that, that's the main reason I made this was for the draconium. Um, all this other stuff is just an extra bonus if you want to use it. And also from the dust you get gold ore, I think you just saw some there, you get gold ore. And so also as a bonus, uh, 
I've got that coming into here just in case it gets backed up. Actually, there's gunpowder in there for some reason. I'm not sure what that is. I think when, when I was messing with things, it got it got backed up. Uh, ooh, that's cool. Actually, there's probably a lot of gold being smelted now because it was all backed up. So that's going into an, a, a crafter, which takes your gold or pieces and crafts them into gold or chunks. I made this with the Ender IO one, but if you want, it's a lot cheaper to make these RF tools ones. Um, and they work actually a lot better than this one, to be honest, because they, ha they have their own storage area. Uh, like a lot bigger than the 3x3 three three grid. And also you can get multiple crafting recipes. So I turn some of that. That gets sucked into this furnace, smelted. Wait, no. That, it goes into this, this sag mill, gets turned into dust. That goes that way, you're doubling your gold. You could smelt a gold chunk and get one gold ingot. Or if you, if you use them in a sag mill, you get two gold dust. And then into the furnace. Um, it gets smelted. So you using the sack well, you're essentially doubling your gold, um, which you know is always a bonus. And also from dust, you also get blaze powder, which is you know it's if you want to use the blaze powder. I, I've just got to store it over here because I couldn't really think of a good use for it. Um, but yeah, so that's what my first version was. And then I wasn't happy with the blaze powder. I wasn't happy with how much I've separated this thing. It's a weird shape. So I thought I'm going to try and compact it all together. And I don't like how I had all three different crucibles in a different area instead of just having one big one and going to all the different machines. Which you'll come over here is what I did. Now initially I didn't actually have this third row, but I found that these weren't efficient enough just having two rows. And um, so I've got, I made the extra row and took this uh, platform back one. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirty crucibles and that one is full. Ah! Uh, that that wasn't right. Extract. Always active. There we go. Oh, that was weird. So I got all this going out. These all go into these tanks just in case it gets backed up. It shouldn't be getting backed up. Um, and it goes into these three generators. And it also feeds a stone barrel here and a stone barrel here. Now, it's the same system as before where these guys get hammered and, uh, and then uh, sieved. Um, and they all go into this chest like they did over there. Except this time goes from this chest and they each have their own individual draw. That was the very first thing I did. And that way you can actually pick and choose if you want to do all the extra bonuses or have them all together um, in the drawers. Now the, the main focus of the design is to get draconium. That's the uh, whole point of this. So I, had to, I put the glowstone right on the end, put the stone barrel here. So that's receiving lava from all these crucibles as well as everything else. And so the, the glowstone was right under this. Uh, as you can see, it's, it, the glowstone doesn't get backed up whatsoever. It, it works really nicely with the design. You basically get a glowstone roughly around the same time before lava. So it's the same as before. The end stone goes in here in case it gets backed up. Goes into the hammer. Goes into the, uh, the sieve. And then uh, the uh, ender pearl powder. And also the shulker pearls go into this chest. Um, and the um, draconium dust goes into the furnace, which goes into the straw. And you can see we've got just a new stack there. And then I was quite happy with that, so that's the main thing. Then I thought, with all this extra stuff, and I, I thought, I'm going to do the same thing with the gold and, and the, the nether rack. Um, I mean, as you can see there, we've still got loads of redstone. It's, it's, it's actually backing up very slowly, because it doesn't make enough lava to fill this up and this up constantly with the amount of glowstone and redstone that this uh, safe produces. So you can either slow this down by not having the upgrade with this, which I'll show you. This is a mechanical user. So when you click on a safe with food, it speeds it up. So the mechanical user basically does that. So it activates the block with the item. And I've got steak in there. But the more saturation, the faster the safe. I've used steak because that's, I would say that's an average food that we can all get. But it, there's, um, in Pam's Harvest Craft, if we go to Pam's, um, and we go to say, uh, what, what's a big meal? Like we've got these guys, like 15x saturation. So that would make it go like twice as fast as the steak would, which is insanely fast and great. Um, but again, I mean, that would mean I have to upgrade these guys to get uh, stuff faster to keep, make it worth it. So steak works pretty well though. And so yeah, uh, you can get more draws to keep because the redstone will eventually back up, or you can increase um, lava. It's up to you. So I've got that making the nether rack again. That's completely optional. You don't have to make the nether rack. 
And I've got the gold as before, so the gold goes into the crafter, uh, which goes into the sag mill, which goes into the furnace, which goes into the drawer. And I kind of like having everything all neat. And you can see that I've got most of the conduits hidden on this design, whereas they're all open over there, or at least a lot more open. The only one I've got showing is this one, and that's because it's such a mess underneath that I thought it would be easier just to have it there. Okay, and, so, and then I thought about the blaze powder. And I was getting so much bit I thought I need to find a use for this. And I wanted to find a use for the ender pearl powder. So I thought, what if I now the ender pearl powder doesn't have many uses. The number one use is making it in ender pearls. So I thought I can use the ender pearls and I can use the blaze powder to make eye of enders. And there's also an ender generator which uses eye of enders to make energy. So I thought brilliant, I'll do that. The only problem I've encountered with the design so far is that when I'm using the crafter, I get blaze powder a lot faster than I get ender pearl powder. So, you, you, uh, you got, I really don't have any fixes for that. Um, there's not really any sort of filter you can use, so that is something that you'll have to bear in mind. If you can sort of filter this out so it's, it works better, that'd be great. Um, my knowledge isn't enough for that. But yeah, so, I mean, it just means every so often you gotta go empty this and maybe feed it back into the system or something. But yeah, so that makes the end of, uh, eye of enders, and he, that, this is the craft I was talking about earlier, where you can have multiple recipes and you can upgrade this stuff more really easily. So yeah, that goes in there, makes eye of enders which go into the straw in case it backs up, which goes into the ender generator, and I've just got a capacitor here, just for the sake of it to be honest, just because I was making that much energy, I thought you can even put capacitors there. And also, as before, the gunpowder goes into these explosive generators, and these are all completely full. Like, there's a lot more of these, and they're still full. Um, and I'm probably getting lots of gunpowder. Yeah, I've got almost a, a full draw worth. So you get gunpowder so fast in this. So, if you want power, this also works as a, like a power generator as well. So this thing has so many different uses. I made it for the draconium. You get netherrack, gold, and just a ton of energy as well. Um, but again, all the other ones optional. So, with the information I've given you, you should, in theory, be able to make this yourself. But if you think, no, I want to use your design, I like what you've done, then I'm going to show you how to make this copy on this area. I made this, I pre-prepared this. Now this is an 11 by 20 area. You don't have to use andesites, you can use whatever box you want, it doesn't make a difference. Now this one is just, this is too wider, just because I want to move this a bit further along, because when it uh, explodes, um, you know, even though you're over here, you can get a little bit of a, a, a knockback, um, a little bit of explosion from this, so it's better to move that a bit further away. So yeah, um, let's get started with, with the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is our law of regeneration. So for the design I used, I made 30 crucibles. So we've got three lines of 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now if I just quickly grab a wand, oh, on my game's bagging, oh, what's going on, there we go, that's better, uh, unbreakable wand, there we go, that's a bit faster, well it would be if my computer wasn't there lagging a bit, so we have three rows of ten, that's thirty, now if you grab your cobblestone generator, um, I guess you can put it pretty much anywhere, I'm just going to, I think and there I put roughly in the middle, doesn't really make a difference, for the sake of it, let's just put it there, fourth block in. And so what we want to do now is go underneath this, and we want to break out underneath the crucibles for our netherrack. Now, you're going to need 30 netherrack for this. Now, um, if you can't afford 30 netherrack, I mean, if you're making draconium, and that's how you'll find this video, you should have loads of netherrack, or have the ability to make lots of netherrack, but if you don't for some reason, um, if you just start saving uh, dust manually, you'll get a bunch of um, redstone, and then you'll be able to do all this stuff anyway. So yeah, you want 30 netherrack. If you go just go like that. There we go. And then like that. Okay, let's get our flint and steel. Or any sort of fire source. Now we're using nether rack with fire underneath the crucibles because on Sky Factory 3 that is the fastest way to power a crucible. You could use lava 
or other sources, but they won't be quite as fast. Now, if you were smart, you would have put the netherrack down before the crucibles, but that didn't occur to me until just a second ago. Great. Okay, so maybe do the netherrack and fire before you put the crucibles down. Either way, you want it to look like this. Now, if you see here, on the crucible, it's solid zero, liquid zero, rate four rex. And that's because we've got fire there. That's the fastest you can make them. So now, if you want to grab your item conduits, you want to put an item conduit on top of this diamond gen uh, cobblestone generator. And we want to put one on top of all the um, crucibles. So just like that. And every single one. Now, you have two options here. You can grab a, I think it's called a Yeto wrench. This guy, yep. And uh, that's quite easy to make, it's just electrical steel, and basically electrical steel, you just alloy, silicon, coal, and iron. You should have all that stuff by now. So if you click on these, or right click, it turns arrow facing down, so items go into it. Or if, if for some reason you don't want to make a Yeti wrench, you just go on, click on this arrow, and it goes on insert, which is, does exactly the same thing. But it's a lot faster to just use a wrench. Okay, so now that that's done, we want to go over to this guy, right click on the square, oh, wrong one, I want to click, left click on this one and make it always active. And that will fill up all these crucibles with cobblestone. Let's just get rid of that writing. Um, and so now this is going to be making lava. So you want to set that lava up and put it into some tanks. And for three fluid tanks here, these things are super cheap and really useful. For the sake of the design, I'm going to have three here. And we want to get our fluid conduits. Again, this is easy to make. It's just quite clear glass with just, just, um, alloyed of three glass. So these are cheap to make. And the conduit binder, you should, you should already have all this stuff known in the recording, but I'm just going through it just in case. Um, and you would basically want to put one fluid conduit on every crucible now. And you should get something like this. It's rain and tacos. Okay. So once you've put all your fluid conduits on, it should look like this, quite a big mess. And then what I did on this design is I put one here and one here, but not one in the middle. I didn't want to put one in the middle. And that's because we're going to stick into these two and have both of these push into the middle one. So essentially all the lava will end up here, even though it doesn't have any pipes connected to it. And now to pull up the lava out of these crucibles, if you go on this gray square here, and now this is the item conduit, which you have inserted, if you've got this fella here, this is for the fluid conduits, where we want to go on extract and always active, and that will suck the law out of this, and it will actually go into the tank at some point. Now you want to go on this on all 30 of your crucibles, extract and always active, and there you can see there, law is coming in. So it's a bit of a long process, but you know, that's the only way to do it. Unfortunately, there's not a faster way to do this. It's a, it's a little bit slow, but I'll see you when you're doing that. Hey, what time is it? It's muffin time! It's muffin time! Uh, actually it's 12.30. Somebody kill me! Okay, so now we've actually got all these guys on extraction. And if you think you've missed one, don't worry. It'll be obvious because in a, in a few, uh, well, more than a few minutes. If you have missed it, the crucible will fill with lava. If it's not taking the lava out. And like you saw early over there, uh, it'll become quite clear. So now these guys are filling with lava quite fast. So if you right click on our middle fluid tank, go and configure IO, and it should look something like this. So if you left click and drag across, right click on this side for pull, click and drag across on this side, and again right click for pull, it will actually pull the lava from both these tanks into this middle tank. And this tank is gonna push all the lava to all of our uh, lava systems. So this, all these guys are basically like the middlemen in case for some reason the back's up or you're producing too much lava but you want to keep some of it. That's what these guys are for. Now this is making a lot of lava. Um, again, you can, you can even, uh, make this longer if you want. I mean, you've got more space here. If you want to make this, it's basically if you want your nether rack faster, um, you can add a few more crucibles on, especially since we're moving this a bit further along. That's completely your choice. But for what you, for what I thought you would need, this is what I've gone with. 
So that is basically all of our lava generation done. So let's move now on to the serving port. Okay, so now we're going to need the, a few more things to get our uh, serving going, so we can get all the dusts and ingots and all the other stuff that we need for this generator. So I'm using magmatic generators, like I said earlier in the video, you can use lava generators if you want. I like magmatic generators, that's just because of me. You don't have to use them if you don't want to, it's just my choice. So I'm using, for this design, I'm using three. Uh, to be honest, one or two would be more than enough, but I think three, just, you can just get a little extra bonus for your lava. And so we want to fill these guys up with lava. Now I'm doing this by going underneath here. I should be around here. That is our fluid tank. Is that the middle one? It was the middle one. Shouldn't have done that. Sorry about that. For us fill you back up with lava. Like that. Okay. Then we'll have our three tanks here. So if I get a fluid conduit, I forgot to get one earlier. There we go. Now I want to go from this tank into these three generators. So we've got this guy, we're going to go and extract, always active, and that will fill these guys up with lava, and they should be turned on. As you can see, they are here. So now our lava is getting pumped from the crucible. Oh, great, you can over here. See how this one's filling up with lava? That means it's not getting extracted properly. That's because it's never active. You're always active, and now it's going to pull it out. So it's really obvious to see if you haven't configured one properly, so don't worry too much about it. So now we're making all this power and we want to use it for our sieves and our hammers. Although just one sieve actually. So you're going to need three auto hammers and three auto, and just one auto sieve. So if you put one hammer here, one hammer here, one hammer here. Now the direction doesn't really matter that much. Because they're all going to face the same way anyway if you look at them. And you want one auto sieve at the front. You got a little fella here, the guy with a beard. Now we want to power these things. So if you want to go underneath, now you've got a choice. You can either break through the middle here and put one conduit here to all four, break through and connect that up to the generators like this. And that is the way I would do it because it doesn't look too bad. Like that. Or, and that's also what I did over oh, here and I put a block there to hide it. Or if you wanted to look fancy, you could break all four of these and have it go to each individual one. Like that. Uh, break you and have you there. Or something like that. So that you don't see it. Completely your choice. Whatever you want to do. And um, I think it looks perfectly fine. Like that, that's the way I will always do it. But again, it's your choice for whatever you prefer. Yeah, that's right, okay. So now these guys are getting power. And so now what we want to do is get one of these, is get a few of item conduits. So we want cobblestone going to this hammer. It has to be this hammer because we want to go from this one. We want gravel, then gravel into sand, sand into dust, and then dust gets sieved. So we want to go our, our uh, cobblestone generator here. If we can break that block, you don't have to go all around if you want to. The point is we want to get cobblestone from the generator into that hammer. So we'll do some of that. Come along here. Along like that. And you're connected up there. Now if you click on you, we want the item conduit here. Not the fluid pipe, the item conduit. And go on insert. And look up here. That should already be on, on extract. You just click on always active. And that should fill up with cobblestone, and it is, you can actually see it breaking down. So we put an item conduit here, and if we click on here, go on disable, because we don't want anything going to this generator from here. And we'll go on insert for this hammer, and it, we want to stay on extract, always active. Now the gravel will go into there, and we'll do that, this exact same thing here, we'll make you disabled. Extract, always active, insert here, so now you'll break that sand into dust. We want the dust to go into the sieve. And I've got here, this is like the best one you can make. This is a sieve efficiency, looting three sieve. Um, that's to get much more drops per dust. You can put a normal diamond sieve in there, a uh, diamond mesh. But, you know, if you've enchanted, it's better. I would enchant it all the time. It's a bit more effort, but it's worth it. Now, for these guys to be faster, you want to be putting these guys in. These are efficiency 5 when breaking 3 hammers. 
Um, you know, it's your choice whether you want to. I always would. If I was in my survival world, I would be making these. So I highly recommend you do. But again, they are optional. And also these things will break will break over time, but it'll take a long, long time for these things to break. So yeah, it's your choice. Great. So now we're making lots of uh, dust and getting our materials now. But these guys are a lot faster than our sieve here, and this is already getting backed up with dust. So that's why we want a mechanical user. So if we use something like that, and we want a mechanical user facing down into our sieve here. And what, what we want to do here is put your food in. Now, what the best food you put in, the faster your sieve. Now, by this point, you should all have at least access to steak. Then, um, if you had steak and chips, that's, that's amazing if you could use that, because that's so fast. But uh, as a bare minimum, you want to be having steak. Actually, we can get rid of these now. So, we want, this has nine slots, so we fill it to the brim. And if we go on use item on block, and that will actually use it. Uh, it should use item on block. Activate block with item, that's the one. So that is giving it a seven times speed boost constantly. You don't need any power, you don't need any redstone signal, this thing is just always active. And that's going to uh, unblock this. So now we're getting our items in this, so that's, that's probably the hardest port done. So this is basically an automatic form for generating well, sieving dust. So we have a lot of generation here, which is turning into power, which we're using to create and sieve cobblestone all the way down to dust, and automatically sieve it, sieve it, not sieve it, <coughs> and get our loot here. And now, just for the sake of it, I'm putting a diamond chest here. You can use any chest, you can use... You, actually, you're probably best off making a crate, because these guys have a lot of storage. So that has that much. And yeah, it's, I think they do exactly the same to be honest, except these things only cost a bit of wood and this costs lots of diamonds, but this thing is a lot fancier. So for my tutorial, we're using a chest, but it works exactly the same with a crate. So you can make it look nice by going under here, and if we get our item conduits and connect our sieve up to the chest, go on here on that item conduit, go on, ex oh, yeah, on extract, always active, then go on insert, and then all of our loot should go into the chest, as you can see it is. I know it doesn't look very pretty below, but you know, yeah, this world is. I think, can he, can he get the sword? No, yeah, whatever, you know, don't worry too much about it. So now what we're going to do is make a better storage system for all of our things, and uh, get all this other draconium stuff sorted out. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, I think I've got most of what I need on my inventory here. So the first thing you want to want is five basic drawers. So if you put these guys here, just touch them against the crucibles. One, two, three, four, five. And this is where we're going to... Now we get five different items from this, so we have five different drawers. So what we want to do here is I'm going to get one of each item. Like so. That. And like that. Perfect. Now for the sake of this tutorial, it doesn't really matter what goes where, but I want the glowstone to be on the end, and you can copy what I've done to be honest, I go glowstone, redstone, gold, gunpowder, blaze powder, but it doesn't really make much of a difference. So redstone, if we actually want to, uh, what do I go, is it gold, gold and gunpowder? Gold, gunpowder, I'll explain what I'm doing in a second. If you want you can just put the items in, and the, this key is a draw key. Quite easy to make, just gold ingots and upgrade, which is just this with a draw. Yeah, it, it's really easy to make. Now what this does is lets you lock these drawers. So even if there's no items in it, it still has... It's like a filter basically, so only these items will go into these drawers now. So now if you connect up your chest to your drawers, all the items go in the same place. And if, let's say you run out of glowstone, and you think, oh no, now anything can go in this drawer, they can't, because it's locked with a key. Only glowstone could go in there now, and the same with the other items. So we want to connect our chest up. So we go over like this. Oh, we've already got a guy gone here. So what we're going to do next is get our drawers. Now, what are you having? Good. No, blaze powder. So one, two, three, four, five. We're going to put one item conduit going into all these guys. 
we put them all on insert. Insert, insert, oop, insert, and insert. And we just want to hook all these guys up. Now, what's the best way to do it? We don't want to touch this because they'll get confused. So if you can want along, up here, like this, and um, like that, do the least amount of possible. Now, what I'm going to do here is, because these are all on green, and this is on green, so what I'm going to do to make this easier for me, is when you extract out of your sieve, um, let's see, in and out, yes, no, why did I click on that? Oh, that's weird. Okay, so on our sieve, it's on extract, we want to keep it on extract, but instead of going green, we'll left click and make it into brown. I'm not sure what, what I was on earlier when I was changing it. I think it was glitching out. So now we want to change you to, to X in, in and out, insert brown. So now our sieve is going out in brown, and our chest is inserting brown. So on our out, we want to extract green, and always active. So now our chest will empty out into our drawers, which is should be happening now. So we've got 17 gunpowder, 50 something, uh, yeah, a lot of stuff. <coughs> now this is great and all, but this is going to fill up a lot faster than it can empty. Well, somewhat faster than it can empty. I mean, you don't have to put upgrade in, but I what I did to make this a bit better is if you go on. Uh, speed, oop, spot speed wrong, speed upgrade. Go one of these guys. Now, this is just iron, electrical steel, piston, and vessel torch, nothing fancy. You just get a couple of these guys, and on the extract, put these in, and that's going to empty the chest. Well, there you see, you see, it literally just almost practically instantly emptied it, which is, you know, great. I mean, you could just get away with non beyond if you wanted. I think it would very slightly back up, so you won't have at least one in, but two is a nice extra bonus. So now we've got our storage system going here. Now, what we want to do now, if you come over here, I'll explain it as I go. Now, as you can see here, I've put it up against the crucibles, that's just to give us more space. Well, I'm trying to make this more compact, uh, as I'm showing you, which, so it's even better. As you can see, I'm also with that. So this is actually the final design. That This over here is going to be the final design. This is a rough final design. So I'm going to put our barrel right next to our jaw, like I did earlier though. Something like that. In fact, that is going to interfere. We'll have to put you here. And what we're going to do to make this nicer is we're going to put you behind here. And that's how we're going to insert the glowstone. So it's not quite as public, it's a little bit nicer. So we're going to extract, always active, and on insert. I'm going to have a drink because I'm getting quite a dry throat. That's better. Root beer. Now, this thing is going to put glowstone in when this thing's filled with lava. So that's where we want to go now. So if we break a block under here so we can find it. Something like that. Then we go under here and find our lava. So here it is here. So we can actually jump off this. Go along here. And fill in here. Now we're going to need a wrench. Because this... It already has lava coming out. And so it's like, oh, a new pipe. We don't want to touch that just in case. So if you hold shift and you saw mouse wheel to scroll, you can make it so you can only see the fluid conduits. Now if I right click on you, that will connect it up. You say, oh yeah, we do want to receive in there. And then now it will connect up to the barrel. That looks a little bit more complicated than what it is. Honestly, once you try it, you'll say, oh yeah, that makes sense. And it'll all be good. Uh, I don't think I need you anymore. Uh, okay. So now we're making end stone. Brilliant. Exactly what we want. Now as you can see over here, I've got the end stone actually going into a drawer. This is just in case it backs up for whatever reason. It shouldn't, but if it does, you're not losing end stone. It's getting stored safely in the drawer. So we're going to do that again. So I'm going to have you going... When does this look nice? So we'll put you there. And if I put you there, and I go on... You go go back onto the, the stone barrel. Go here, go left click twice. So you're still inserting on green. But this time on extract, we're gonna go on brown. 
always active, insert, brown, and that way endstone will come in here. So just to explain that again in case I've gone too fast, we're extracting on green out of the straw, inserting on green into the barrel, we're extracting from the barrel on brown, and inserting into the draw on brown. And as you can see there, this thing was massively overflowing with lava, and very quickly this thing is going to empty, and we'll have a bunch of endstone stored up there. Now, as you can see from the straw here, we want to put that into a hammer, into a sieve, and then we want some items from the sieve, we want to go into the chest, and some items from the sieve, we want to go into the furnace. The only item that should go in the furnace is the draconium dust. So just let you know that. Okay. And I'm also lagging a bit now. Let's take a drink again. Hmm. Take advantage of the lag. So we're going to go with hammer. It's hammer time. If we go put you there and put you there. I'm doing this slightly different from there. That's just because I'm trying to make this look nicer as I'm building it. So we want to get our uh, end stone coming into our hammer. And we also want power to our hammer. Now you, you kind of have two options here. You could put another um, magmatic generator here. If for whatever reason have lava. Since you've, you've got a lava pipe right here anyway under here. So you could filter it into another generator. But I think um, that's kind of pointless when you can just get all power from here and run you along the same um, pipes. Like this. Uh, where will you be? Uh, you're there, maybe here? There we go, there's our hammer, that was a good guess. And then, like that too. Perfect. So now these guys should be getting power. Should be. Uh, yep, yeah, they are going back. Sorry, I was looking for the wrong thing. Now we've got another mesh here. So we go over here, we're going to copy this one. Again, you want the best mesh you can get for the best results. So now what we want to do is go over end stone going to our hammer. So we go over here, we want to break this. So there's our uh, draw with our end stone in. So we want to get one conduit from there into the hammer. Extract, always active, then insert. I'm make sure you're on the item conduit, not the fluid conduit. And now you should be making crushed endstone. There we go, brilliant. So now we want this crushed endstone to get sieved by this thing. So we're going to go in here and put another conduit here. Now if you go on your hammer, which we've just set to insert green, we're going to go left, left, on the left arrow twice. So we're still inserting green, so that's fine. It's still going to keep receiving endstone. But on extract, you're going to set it to brown and always active. Now on your automatic sieve, you want to go in there, you're going to insert brown, and that should be now receiving crushed endstone. Which it is, brilliant. You don't need uh, a mechanical user for this one, because you're never going to get enough endstone to make it worth it. Unless if somehow you make a super massive version of this. So now, up to this point, we've got our sieve going, so now we want to filter out between the draconium dust and the ender pearl powder and the sugar pearls. So the best way to do that is if we get our stuff ready. So we get our furnace here, and let's put you, say, here, and we'll put our chest here. Cool. And then, actually, we could put a drawer... I mean, to be honest, you could just have your draconium ingots going straight into a chest, if you want. I only need to put a draw here is for like quick access, but as you can see on this form or generator, it just goes into the chest a lot easier. But it's whatever you prefer. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm thinking just the chest, just because I don't want to put another draw here because it makes it look a bit silly. So what we want to do now is this is making draconium dust, our end up our powder, and our shulker pearl. So we go underneath again. Now, if you want on this, now I would recommend making another platform under here so you can access and do all this because you probably can't fly at this point. If you have an angel uh, ring and you can fly, brilliant, this is easy. If you don't, you've got to make another layer. So, this is our sieve. We want to put two item conduits here. Now, at this point, what you want is a filter. You want one, uh, where is it? This thing. A basic item filter will do you fine. So the process recipe for that is really easy, it's just paper and hopper, you know, two non-modded items. So we've got this thing, we'll go on here, if we get all three of our items here, 
Now we want to make this thing extract. So we're going to go in and out. It'll still be on brown, so it's still working fine. On extract, we're going to set to, say I say blue, for the draconium dust. So we'll go on this uh, furnace. We're going to go on uh, in and out. So we're going to insert blue, so the draconium dust goes in here. Um, have we made you active? Okay, so we'll make you, then we'll make this active. And now the draconium dust should go in there. Uh, if, if there was some in, it would, it would go in there anyway. Um, now you don't actually need an item filter for this technically, but I think it's better to, because it'll automatically go through here. The draconium should just go through there anyway. Then anything that can't go into a furnace will go into the chest. But for the sake of it, we're going to put an item filter in here just as a backup. Draconium dust. So what this does, now only this item can go into the furnace, nothing else can go in there now. We've filtered it off, and then if we set this thing to also insert um, on blue, then that would be great. So now all the items will go through here, and now we're going to get another item filter, because we want two of these things. We're going to put shulker pearls and ender powder in this one. So now only end sugar plus end powder, that one only the um the draconium just can go on this one. So it's sorting itself out nicely. So at some point this will keep going and we'll get all that other stuff. So let's just see if it's working at all. Yep, there we go. So if you get this draconium dust which we got out of there, put these guys in. So now we want to power this furnace, which is super simple. We've already got power going to these guys, just put one power cable there. And it'll work perfectly fine. So now we're making draconium. Our factory for our draconium generator is officially working. We've done the point of the video. You can actually finish here if you wanted to. And not watch the rest of it. If you're only interested in draconium. And you can just store these items and do whatever you want in your own free will. But I'm going to show you how to make the, the best use of the rest of these items. Now as you can see here, we're, we're in and out. And the reason we didn't do anything but with that... It's because we want to go on extract blue, always active, and that's there. We'll take them out. It should. Ah, uh, now I'm remembering why I made a draw. Okay. So you've got two options here. You can do something like uh, this. If we put a draw there, and uh, let's say we set this draw to insert, in fact, we want in and out. Let's say insert purple, extract, uh, oops, wrong one, purple, and that will fill you with endstone for some reason. There we go, endstone, uh, there we go. We want that. Uh, if we get a key, like this, we'll lock you. Now essentially what we're doing here, we're putting this here, instead of having it here. But I think it'll look nicer and be more neat. If we have the draconium going to this chest. So from this straw, we're going to put another item conduit here. Okay. And we're going to set this item, this straw on extract, blue, always active. Now, what we're going to do now is get one draconium ingot and add you to the filter and put you back in. So now our draconium ingot should automatically go into this chest now, which is great. So that, there you go, it will automatically, everything you've learned so far, all of this is all to make this, these things. Now, if you're watching this video and you're thinking, and you don't know what, what you shouldn't be watching this video unless you know what draconium is. That should be how you found the video, because you're looking for a draconium generator. But if you're somehow stumbled across this video, and you're thinking, what on earth is draconium even for? It's like the end level material. This is to make, like, this is for Dracon Draconic Evolution, which is a, a pretty big mod. Oh, sorry, I'm just getting a drink. You use it to make your powered armor, which makes you take, like, no damage. Like, this is this is good stuff, this, okay? Take my word for it. Um, so, yeah. That's basically that. So, now, I'm going to show you all that little extra bonus stuff we can use. Our redstone, glowstone, gunpowder, and blaze fall. So, the next I'm going to show you how to do is make use of our redstone and glowstone first. Uh, our redstone and gold ore first. So let's do that. Okay, so next thing next. We're going to be making something quite similar to this. With the stone barrel. So, if you grab a stone barrel, you're going to need one. 
and I find our redstone draw here. If you put the redstone here like I have, you can put this one block in front. Nice and easy. Now this thing we want to fill with lava, just like the glowstone one. So we break the block underneath. We'll come here. Uh, we'll put our fluid conduit connecting up to it. Then one down. Now there is a fluid conduit here. So we get a getter wrench. Uh, we're going to hold shift, scroll until you're on the, the uh, fluid conduit. So we can see the sky. Click you and it connects it to the lava pipe. So now this thing will receive lava. But it will prioritize this one over this one, which is what we want, because we want draconium a lot more than we want uh, leather rack. That's the whole point of this form, is to get draconium. So yeah, that's great. So now we want to get this redstone going into here. Now, you have two options. You can be lazy and faster and have you going straight there into the lava. But, you know, we can't really be lazy, can we? So what we're going to do is we're going to... That's our redstone draw. We're going to get a pipe coming off you along under you and connect there now we're going to have you on uh, in and out now if you go on this one here we're going to go in and out so we're inserting on green so that's the inserts our redstone and on extract we're going to right click on it once for red red for redstone that's my theory behind this so on this one for the stone barrel we want to go on insert right click on this one once for red. Now you, we should have another rack when we go up there. We should. Wait, did I set it active? Come on, Zoo. Did you set it active? I bet you didn't. I bet you forgot. You did forget. Always active. There's our nether rack. Great. Now we, now for this, we can actually just put you straight into a, a drawer. So we just put, do like that. No, straight from here into here. Boom. Set a, a conduit here. And let's put you on inserts. Let's say black. Then on the extract, we're on black. Always active. And we should be getting another rock in there. Perfect. So now it's, this is going to fill up really fast. So it's going, that is going to empty all of our lava supply making this thing. Like really fast. But that's fine because that's what it's there for. But now you don't have to do this. You can just, if you want redstone more than you want nether rock, don't make this. It's your choice. Um, and now we want to sort our gold out. And I put the gold ranked to you. So what we want to do is put a... There it is. A crafter tier 1. Again, these things are super easy to make. Now, I would upgrade this to a tier 2 for whatever reason. That's how cheap it is. Crafting tables and resin torches. It's so cheap. So put that thing there. So that's going to make it into um, gold or chunks. We want a sag millet. Smelt it. Then put it in a drawer. So, sag mill, furnace, draw. Just to make sure you put that. So, our crafting. So, if we get uh, a few of these guys, I'm going to go on, uh, double click to edit this recipe. So, we've got this grid here. I'm just going to have a drink. Mm. Now, we've got one, two, three, four. Apply. That's this recipe saved. So when this gets four uh, gold ore pieces, when it does power, it'll make it into f uh, a gold ore chunk. So next we want to power that thing. So if you go there, there and there, because we want to power our crafter, our sag, sag mill and our furnace. So we just grab a power cable, connect these up to the nearest power source. So now these things are getting powered. So there you go, we've got gold ore chunk. Now, I want to get gold coming from this drawer into this crafter. So, go back underneath. Find our gold drawer. So, that's it. You can see there. So, we're going to go off this. Uh, oh, there we go. And uh, now, what we can do here, because this conduit is also connected to our gold drawer, we can save a bit of time and money and put one conduit there. Right. Now, if we go in our gold drawer, left click twice. Now, we want to keep insert some green to insert the redstone into the drawer. Extract, let's say, white. Uh, always active. So now, this is going to insert white into whatever we set it to go into. So we go in our, in our crafter tier 1, on our item conduit, go on in and out, insert white. And that will, oh, 
we weren't quite fast enough, so we won't put that back in. That's just from when we were flicking, uh, flicking through. So just put it back in there. So now all of our gold ore chunks will be getting made in the, no, all of our gold, um, gold ore pieces will be getting made in the gold chunks. That's it. We'll put another co uh, item conduit here. Now that's actually going to touch this one. So what we can do is if we bring you down one, break you off, just because we don't want them to touch. Go. Uh, is that okay? It is okay. We feel like that. Um, I'm getting a little bit of lag. Every so often I get like a, a slight uh, lag spike. So now we've got one this. Now if we go onto this fella, we're inserting the white, which is the gold chunks, the gold ore pieces, whatever. We're going to go on our extract. I want to, let's extract, say, orange. So orange is our gold ore chunks. We want to insert them to a sag mill. Now the reason we're simply insert the sag mill and not the furnace is because we want to try and double our gold. So we go on uh, orange again. And then we set you to always active because I always forget to do that. Now we should be getting gold ore chunks here. And one gold ore chunk should make two gold dust. Which is great. Because if you smelt one gold ore chunk, you get one gold ingot. So we're all essentially doubling our gold, which is great for us. And we're just gonna break that block there as well, because we're gonna need access to this. So you put another atom conduit here. Now you might be thinking, Zoo, this is just such a big mess. It is a big mess, but it's better to have it underneath the island than on top of your island. In my book anyway. So we're in and out, like the rest of them. So now we've got to pick another colour for our extract. So if you go for magenta, always active. I'm going to insert our furnace. Uh, let's see, where's magenta? There we go. So now, oh, we've got our redstone going in there now. There we go, that's better. It's because I'm not fast enough for uh, changing these over. What even is that? We are flux. Whatever that is, you know, I don't really... No, I'm not going to get involved in that right now. Another day, Zoo, another day. So now only our gold uh, dust will go into this furnace. Great. Perfect. So now we're getting gold. Yay! So now what we want to do is get this thing here. I, and guys, it's almost over. Don't worry. This is such a long video, I know, but it's really worth it. So extract. Pick another colour. Light blue. Always active. Now if you go on insert and really fast go on light blue. Probably not fast enough. We weren't fast enough. Come on. If I set you to active, I better haven't. Bella forgot. Oh, oh, I was. I didn't remember. Light blue. Insert light blue. So where's our gold going? There we go. It, it is working there. Oh, I was on the wrong one. That's why. Yeah, gold ingots. So it's all working. We're officially getting gold from this. Now it is a little bit slow. That's because we've waited so long, it's a little bit backed up. But once these are finished smelting, it won't uh, be so backed up. So now we're, from this form, we're now getting draconium, sugar pearls, ender pearl powder, netherrack, and gold. Brilliant. Uh, so far, everything is completely self-reliant. We don't have to do anything to it. We can leave this now, go away for a few hours, or however long you want, come back, and you'll just have a bunch more stuff. You could leave it again, you could leave it here, you could say, I'm happy with that, you know, I'm going to leave it there. But we've still got this gun powder, and we've also got this blaze powder. And I think we should do something with that. So starting with the gunpowder, you're going to get so much of this, and it's going back up really quickly. And, you know, we're going to find some sort of use for it. Now, this, I'll be honest, there's not many uses for gunpowder. I mean, you can make TNT, it's many explosive stuff. So if you want to make explosive stuff and keep the gunpowder, no, do it. You, you're quite welcome to. Um, but I found that the best way to do this is to make all these guys, an explosive generator. Quite easy to make. Um, so we go for explosive generator. So that's what we're going to do next. We're, go we're going to focus on using our gunpowder to make even more energy than these guys. Because... These guys are actually starting to lose power. We're not getting enough power to power all the stuff that we've got. So that's why this is even more important to use our gunpowder. So yeah, we're going to do that next. Okay, so you don't actually need many items with this one. 
it's a lot more simple. We're going to go right to the end here. We're going to go flush with these air crucibles. And we're going to put, I think it was 12 I've got on this side. Yeah, let's just go 12 again. I quite like that number. So, 148, 12. I mean, actually, we're going to go for 16 because this thing is still getting way, way backed up. I mean, this thing is, now we should have, yep, we've got gunpowder stock, like, backing up into the chest now. So, let's go with 16, eh? Why not? Now, I have decided that I want to make another draw since the design and put it here. So now what we're going to do is go have our gun particle from this draw into this draw, then from this draw into these guys. Um, it's just going to be a lot, a little bit easier. That's the main thing to keep track of how much gunpowder we have. And there's also another storage for the gunpowder so it doesn't back up as much. So now the, the next step is to get the gunpowder from here to there. So let's go and do anything to do that. Now if we go for a very rough guess here, here, where's that? Oh, we were so close. So we've got wise conduits, put a pipe here, so we can see where it is. And let's go to our maze of items here. Uh, there's our gunpowder. Um, so what we want to do now is if we go from here to, let's say, here, uh, we can actually break... No, we can't break here. Uh, oh, I'm making so many mistakes here, Z. Uh Okay. That is fine like that. Let's just leave it like that. Let's not make this complicated. Let's just avoid all the other conduits. And come nicely along here. Like this. There we go. Now, we need to find another new colour for this fella. So we've got a gunpowder draw. Go this guy, we're going in and out. So we're going to keep it on inserting green to get the gunpowder into that draw. Extract. And let's go for yellow. Always active. So now if you go to our other draw here. Go on. Insert. And yellow. Probably this wasn't fast enough. Oh, you're locked as well. Interesting. Get a key. There we go, gunpowder. Lock you again, just to make sure. Yeah, uh, you know what, why don't you can lock all these guys? You're empty anyway. No, just for the sake of it. So now all of our gunpowder going here. So now we can keep track of how much backup we have. And it's an extra 32 stacks. So, it doesn't back up the chest in instead. So I'm talking lots of my, I'm getting really drive road. So now we want to get all this gunpowder going to these guys. Uh, and that's going to produce more power since this guy is struggling. He's actually almost out of power, so we've got to do this quickly. So let's get these item conduits going. And so you should be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And just break this area out. Perfect. So now if we go like this. That. And that's beautiful. And if we could actually get a wrench. I think this will work. I'm actually doing a slightly different. There we go. Now we've separated the G. So what I'm going to do now is actually... What's the best way to do this? Now what? We're going to have to put this on show. We're going to go behind here. Put you there. And we're going to box this in if you want. If you're really that bothered. I wouldn't be bothered by having that on show, to be honest. You still can't see it. Um, I'm going to go down here. I was trying to make this so we're not using um, as many different colours for stuff we don't need. That. Yes, okay. So now, all these things are only connected up here. So now we actually have this extract, extract green, always active. Make it much easier. And that way on these guys, we we'll only have to flip the arrow. We don't have to change every one of these guys to a different colour. Uh, which would have been a bit of a pain. So in, 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 uh, in, in, in. Now, I've got my Minecraft sound turned off at the minute. So that's why you can't hear the explosions. You can see the explosions, but you can't hear them. But on your screen... It'll be a lot louder. So that's why you want one of these guys. This is a sound nullivator. A sound muffler, sorry. 
Alright, now I can see if we stand over here, you, you get pushed down a bit. But if you stand here, it won't affect you. So that's why I've, I've pushed it over a bit, so it's a bit easier. But this thing will quiet down the sound of the explosion that you'll be hearing. So now we're making power, and all these guys, brilliant. But now we want to use this power to help power our other machines. So now this is going to be a little bit tricky, because it's going to be difficult to see. Which is why I shouldn't have activated this until after. That's fine. So you've got all your power cables, connect all of these guys up. Oop, wrong one. Like so. If you stop making mistakes, Sue. So. Great, now I'm going to just connect this to any uh, power pipe that we have in the area. Like that. And then, you'll notice that you should start going up. You are going up, perfect. That means that, the, that these guys are all powering these machines now. So now these guys won't be struggling anymore. Because they were struggling before. Um, so that's great, so now we're actually using our gunpowder. So you're zero, you're zero, you're 22, zero. We want these guys to be zeros. That means they're getting used and we're getting the maximum efficiency we can. So there we go. So yeah, that's, that's great, you know, we're making lots of power now, more power, that, that is going to be more power than we need. This thing, you could set up, like, double the sieving and hammering stuff, and you'll have enough power. But we still got all this blaze powder. And we need to find a use for it, because we can't just let that build up and do nothing with it. So that's where this port comes in. We're going to be making our, um, what are these guys called again? Our ender pearl powder and our blaze powder into eye vendors. And then going into our um, ender generator and make even more power. Because why not? This is Sky Factory. So yeah, let's do that next. Okay, so you don't need much for this. You just need a crafter and uh, ender generator, a few drawers, and however many item conduits and energy conduits you could be using. So we're going to start by going over this corner here. We're going to go diagonally one to this block and back one here. You don't have to put in this exact position. This is just what I think looks good. So, our crafter, this guy, this fellow right here. We're going to start by getting one of these. And we're going to get one blaze powder. We'll punch you. We're going to this fella here. New recipe. You there. Just put that in there for now. Uh, you there. No, you, I'm making a mistake already. We're going to get this ender pearl powder. And then we want to fill all nine grids up with this. And make ender pearls. Apply. Perfect. So I'm going to put to this recipe, new recipe, and if we just get an ender pearl, quickly grab one, get the ender pearl, uh, get a blaze powder, apply. Oh, I must not have done any, any recipe, sorry about that. There we go, now we've got both recipes. So one of those items to make either one of these is going to craft it and I'll put it here. That's great. Now, now we want to power this thing. Underneath here, power cable, just connect you up to the, these things here, we're nice and close. So now, perfect, you, you should start making eye vendors. Awesome. So, what do we want to do next? We want to get these things going uh, into our uh, ender generator. So we'll put you here. Um, yes, that's exactly what we want to do. Cool. But to do it, the first thing we want to do is get all of our uh, our ender pearl powder and all of our blaze powder going into this crafter. So to do that, we're going to go underneath here, we have some ice and conduits, put you here, bring you down one, find our diamond chest, here it is, with our uh, ender pearl powder in. Now you should be able to insert blue, or whatever colour you've chosen. Go in and out, extract, let's go with... Uh, Ooh, purple. I th actually, no. I think we've used purple. Let's go with cyan. Always active. Um, I'll connect you up to here. Perfect. And we go on in and out. Insert. Uh, where is this? Cyan. There we go. Uh, and there we go. We're making lots of ender pearls. Brilliant. So now we want to make these guys in dire vendors. And why are you getting draconium in you? That's not... 
Oh, I see the problem. We need to filter this. Sorry, guys. I, I just missed a crucial step there. So you want to get an, uh, a basic item filter, like this thing. Super cheap to make. If we just grab one of these as well. In our insert, we're going to put the item filter, and you want to put one of these guys in. So from our diamond chest, the only thing that will come out of the chest is that powder. But these guys will stay in there, which is what we want. So awesome. Actually, put you back in the chest. I thought something was weird there. I thought that's, that's odd. So awesome. Now we're making that. So now we want to get our gun um, blaze powder going in here as well. So we've got our blaze powder uh, drawer there. Go down here, we'll find it. So we can see that this one is the blaze powder. Go on. In and out. Keep it on in green. Extract. Find a new colour. Light grey. Always active. Now, where do these guys hook up to? I can copy you from here. Another go around here. And then hook up to you. And actually, if I set you to, to Cyan instead. Ooh, I think we can cheat. So remember this right. If I set you to Cyan, you should get Blaze Powder going in you. I think. If I said it always active, that is. That's the, only, well, the one thing I always forget. You're always active, so Cyan. So you should be going through, you can go through that pipe, through there, through there. Along you, along you, into here, through there, up there. So why aren't you, oh, come on Zoo, you're forgetting things already. You need to put you through the filter. So put you inside of that filter. And now, there we go, now this thing is going to fill up. I don't know how to fix this problem, if you know a way to fix this, brilliant. And um, you know, ooh, you can make that look different. Um, yeah, so now, now we want to get these ender pearls going back into the system. So if we get an ender pearl, I'm going to see if we can cheat. I don't think this will work. Um, so if you're going extract, in fact, no, what we're going to do is have a draw. Let's say here. And we are going to extract um, on uh, find a new color, light gray, and you're gonna insert uh, light gray. Then we're going um, always active. No, what we want to do is get a basic item filter, put you in there, put our ender pearl in there, and then. We can set you to always active. There we go. So now we're ender pearls will come out of here. And then we actually want to set you to be in and out. And set you to cyan. For the extract. Always active. And I think the ender pearls could and should go back into here. No, I don't think that wants to work with us. I didn't think that would work. I thought it was a bit weird. So if we set you as... T -t 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 -t. See, I don't know whether you can go from the same pipe. Go insert. Actually, wait, if we set you to in the pearl, will it work? Aha, that does work. Awesome. Okay. So now when, whenever we make an ender pearl, it'll go out of the system, back into the system. Which is exactly what we want. You out of place power already. That's brilliant. And uh, maybe this thing won't get backed up so much. So put you in there. So now we're making eye vendors. Brilliant. So now if we put a, uh, let's say a draw here. In fact, no. Let's put them straight into the generator. Actually, you know, we're not even going to bother. We could. In fact, you could move this back one. I think it looks fine here. Um, if we go that. Wrong one. Put you here. Uh, so we want to go for extract on light grey. Insert on light grey. 
then you should receive Ender Pearl. I have Enders. Perfect. Okay. Things are going our way. So now, all of our Blaze Powder, all of our um, Ender Pearl Powder will go into this thing. It's going to make Ender Pearls. It's going to take the Ender Pearls, put them into the straw, take them back out the drawer, to put them back in here to make Eye of Enders. And the Eye of Enders go into this end generator, which is making power. And then we can take that power um, and click it there. So now you are making power for me. Lovely jubbly. Oh, okay. And that is finished. That's everything. That's all the information you're getting for this design. It's, you know, I've been recording for over an hour for this thing. You know, it's very complicated in theory. Once you understand how it works, it's not actually that bad. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. So if we just do a quick recap of everything we've done. So first thing we do is make our lava generator. So we've got all that tanked up. We then float all the lava into these magmatic generators to power our hammers and our sieve. And we've got our cobblestone going into our hammer, making the dust, serving the, excuse me, the dust, making all of these things. We've got some lava from our lava generator, put into a barrel. We've took our dust that we receive, and we've used that to make end stone. We've crushed the end stone, we've sieved the end stone, and we've got draconium dust from it, and we've smelted that for draconium ingots. We're also getting sugar pearls and ender powder, which is going over there. We're also getting redstone, which you're using to make netherrack for, you know, whatever you need netherrack for. We're also getting gold ore, which we're crafting into gold chunks, which is we're sag milling to get two gold dust per chunk, which we're smelting to make lots of gold. In the time I've made this, I've already got over three sacks of gold. And, you know, that's just this by itself. You don't do anything to it. And then we're also taking our gun power that we're making, and we're making lots and lots of extra power um, for these guys to power up these machines. And there's loads of powers left over if you want to power some other machines for, you know, whatever you want electricity for. And then we're taking our blaze powder and our ender powder. We're going over, we're crafting it in the end eye of enders, which is going to an ender generator, which is making even more power for your power needs. But the main number one reason I made this is for the draconium. You know, this is really valuable stuff. And the fact that you can now make this on a machine that you no longer have to, like, have to even talk to anymore. It's all set up ready to use. And um, you know, it, it's pretty cool. So you could get all the draconium you possibly need from this. So yeah, this is my finished design. I'm quite happy with it. It look, it even looks a little bit better here than it does over there. It's a bit, it's a bit neater. I mean, you could have moved this over here if you wanted. Or put it like even here. You could have had the two things here, but I think it looks nicer. More separated over here, just just because it's, it's its own thing. So it's, it's not all crowded. Plus, you put it under there, I mean, it, it would have been a big even more of a big mess. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's the video. Um, I really hope you found this useful. Um, if, you, if you really struggle and you can't think, oh, that, or if you think, oh, I would do that different, or Zoo, you should have done that instead, tell me how I can improve it. Because um, if I can make it better, you know, tell me. Uh, uh, but we want this to be as good as, as it could possibly be. Um, so yeah, that's awesome. So I uh, really hope you found it useful. If you have used this and you thought, oh, this is brilliant, leave a like, subscribe if you want to see some more videos. I've got other Sky Factory tutorials on my channel too. Um, yeah, leave a like. If you have any other ideas for tutorials or things, you think, oh, I wish there was a t tutorial to make this item or make these blocks, tell me and I'll, I'll get to work on it. You know, I don't mind doing that. So yes, thank you again for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.